Rusty Road crop top. So here is my finished top. I've shown I'm it's not working. I'm having some internet issues. Well, I've put it into data. Okay, so it's not reconnecting with data. Do you have internet on your phone? Okay, guys, sorry about that. It looks like I'm back. I'm having a little bit of internet issues, I guess, today. So I really apologize for that. I hope that the stream will continue and won't get messed up again. Sorry. Okay, so we're using Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. So this is from We Crochet and I will be giving away five balls of this through the live today. So make sure that you're commenting on the feed so I can go through commenting, say hi, whatever, so I have some names to pick from. So here are some of the other colors you could choose from. This is Rainforest Heather. It's a really nice blue color. I used pumpkin for the first top that I made and there's also white. So these are the colors that I ordered, but this is a really lightweight. It's really fine, but it actually works up fairly quickly. So don't be intimidated by that. It's great for garments to have something nice and light. And it is a 75% uh, fine super wash merino wool and nylon, 25% nylon. So it's really great. I'm I haven't worked a lot with fingering weights, but I have to tell you that I've loved the lightness that this gives. This is so light and airy. And the design is just made from two rectangles. So I'm gonna give you a little preview here. I'm maybe gonna move my camera up just a little bit more so you can see a bit more here. Okay, so here are a couple panels. I did two, I did another top and I blocked these panels last night so you could see. So they're just two large rectangles. So if you have not made garments before, this is just a great top to try and it's so flattering. And the style right now is this sort of square, big baggy look. So you're making two rectangles. That's it. So even if you wanted to do a different stitch pattern, if you just want to experiment yourself, you could do any stitch pattern. You just need to make two big long rectangles and then seam them together. Now this one, as you can see, I haven't edged it so it does look a little off from the blocking. This one here, I went and I started crocheting the edge so that's why it looks nice and clean. So we're making two large rectangles. You're just leaving a neck opening and you're seaming them. So it's great, simple design. So let's move this out of the way and let's get into some of the things you're going to need. So you're going to need some stitch markers. You're going to need two hook sizes. So I'm using a 3.5 millimeter through the majority of the pattern and then I've used the 4.5 for that final edging after we've blocked it because once you block it it's going to expand the top so that <clears throat> you want to use a larger hook for that. Now, if you're joining me on YouTube, there is a link in the description that you can get right into the pattern on Ribbler. So if you want to hop over and go to Ribbler so that you're right inside the pattern, go ahead and do that. So you're going to need some scissors. You're going to need a yarn needle. And also you're gonna need a measuring tape. Just went and grabbed my measuring tape and you're gonna need a blocking mat and pins. So what I suggest, an affordable way to block is just to go get some of those large foam mats from, I picked mine up at Walmart, you can grab them anywhere. There are some great blocking kits you can get as well, but if you get the big, large foam mats, you can do big garments, big pieces, and it works out great. And I have some different types of pins. I usually end up having to use a lot, so you can just use like regular pins like this. I love the ones specific for blocking mats, but I don't have a ton of them. 
they work great too. So you're gonna need some pins. And let's get started, okay? Let's get started with our first rectangle. So this stitch pattern, I'm gonna show you here. You can find this image right in the pattern on Ribbler, but I'm just gonna grab my printed pattern just to kind of show you. So I have included the stitch pattern in this because sometimes some people need a visual to kind of see how the stitch pattern looks, even though I have it all written out for you as well. It's good to kind of have that little visual. So the stitch pattern is worked in multiples of three. So if you want to alter at all, I know some people don't like a crop top. They want it a little bit longer. So I've given you the multiples you're going to work. So multiple of three. So multiply out three times whatever. So for the size I'm working on, it was 162 and then I needed to add one. So my chain is 163 for the medium size, but you can alter that. You could even make this long enough to be a cover up over a bathing suit if you wanted. And I would say maybe double that chain if you want something longer like that, but you can alter it. But for the tutorial that I'm gonna show you here, I'm just gonna work a smaller swatch so that we're not working with those huge numbers. And it's great, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just pop up. I can see all of your comments in Ribbler. So if you're commenting in the live in Ribbler, I can see all those comments. It's a little harder for me to see YouTube comments because it's on my phone, I can't see. So I'm just gonna pull up my, on my computer, the YouTube stream as well, just so I can take a peek over if I'm missing any of your comments because I don't wanna miss your comments if you have questions as I go. So make sure that you, make sure that you pop comments in so that I can pick somebody that's gonna win some of the yarn. Plus, I wanna see if you have questions. If you have questions, make sure to pop them in there. Okay, so I've got my live stream now. It looks like, because I'm, I apologize that I'm, basically crooked on the side. I, if I, you're not going to be able to see as much if I turn my camera the other way. Let me know what you think. Tell me if you think you really want me to flip the camera the other way or not. Let me know what you think. Okay. So I have a question. So I'm going to go through some of the questions already. There's a lot of questions on the YouTube stream. So I will go through and see if I can answer anything. Um, Okay, there's lots of comments on YouTube. So yes, if you wanna go right inside the pattern, you can hop over to that link on to go right inside the pattern on Ribbler. Okay, so someone asked, you have to use fingering weight yarn? No, you don't. You could use whatever you want. It's just gonna, just um, try to keep your sizing similar to mine and your, your top's just gonna come out a little bit heavier. I really do recommend the fingering, but you could use something else if you want. Really, you're looking at making two rectangles in the size. So for the medium, it, you actually, I have the schematic in the pattern. So it's going to tell you your rectangle sizes. So I would just go by the size of the rectangle for the size that you're working on. Sorry, <clears throat> I'm fighting off a cold here in my throat. Um, so here's going to tell you, just look at the dimensions, and if you want to switch up your yarn, whatever, just make your rectangles roughly that size. Now, one important thing that I haven't mentioned yet is gauge. So let's take a look. I gave you the gauge not blocked, and I also gave it to you blocked because there's a big difference. So if you're swatching, try to meet your swatch here to my gauge not blocked. And then when you block it, it is going to stretch it out quite a bit. So if you're using the same yarn, same hook, everything, try to meet this gauge of 18 and a half stitches and 11.75 rows. And then once we block it, as you can see, it's completely going to change the look. As you can see, my stitches are really nice and pulled out once I've blocked them, which is the look that, that I want. 
So, okay, so I'm all over the place here. Let me go back to the comments. So I hope that answers your question. Do you have to block this top or can it be left unblocked? You, I suggest blocking it because I think it makes the stitch look really pretty. If you don't block it, you're gonna have to make your rectangle a little bit bigger or go up a size or two, okay? So that would be my suggestion because you want obviously it to be nice and oversized and a big fit. So if you don't wanna block it, you're gonna just have to make sure that your rectang rectangle size overall is bigger. But for these natural fibers, when you wash them, they just automatically stretch out. The stitches really relax. So when you go to block this piece and put it in water, you'll notice as soon as you pull it out, like it just, all those stitches relax and it wants to stretch out. So, it really depends like what yarn you decide to use. If you're using the same yarn, I suggest wetting that out and blocking it. And I blocked this honestly just to how it naturally wanted to stretch out. I didn't, it just kind of easily went to that 12 inch mark and I just kind of laid it out and, and just sort of saw how it naturally wanted to lay. I didn't over stretch it or anything like that. So, and it will dry actually fairly quickly. I found with my second piece, I was having to stretch a bit more because it was drying too quick. So you may have to go back, do one piece at a time and just pull the other piece out after because I did find this yarn dried really, really fast. Okay, so I'm just gonna go through some more questions quickly. <clears throat> love the original color. Yes, I love that pumpkin color. We looked... A little bit different on the website to what it actually looks like so it's a really nice rusty color I love um, I love how it turned out okay so let me go through just checking it looks fine the way the camera's angled okay okay people thinking it's okay okay great I just wanted to make sure so it's Um, some people are maybe having trouble connecting to Ribbler. How long did you let it soak in the water for blocking? I let it soak for about 25 minutes ish, 25 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes is good, is a good time to let it soak. And I don't have any of the actual blocking soak stuff. So I just used a little bit of dish soap. I just put a little bit of dish soap, lukewarm water, just let it rest and then I took it out, I squeezed out as much water as I could and then I just rolled it in a towel just to kind of get out that extra, extra bit of water. And Jeanette's asking there, each piece separately before seaming, yes. Like the blocking, it just makes it, it just makes it so nice. You definitely, if you haven't blocked before, Blocking your garments really makes the finish gorgeous. And <clears throat> I'm sorry again, my voice, I keep losing it. Okay, so I think I've gone through all the questions through YouTube. I'm just gonna go back to my Ribbler and make sure that I haven't missed anything before I get into um, doing the stitch pattern. Okay, I think I've got all the questions answered. So if you have more, of course, just pop them up. So I'm gonna pull over, just cause it's easier for me looking at this, my printed pattern as I work through. So we're gonna begin with a slip knot. We're using the 3.5 millimeter hook. So using the smaller hook, you're gonna make your slip knot, put that on, on your hook, okay? So you can look at the sizes. I have all the way up to 5X. So if you're making an extra small, you would chain 151. A small is 157. So I've made them a little a little bit shorter. So it goes, the top does get a little bit longer as you get larger because you know there's bust to you know think about there that we want. I wanted it a little bit longer. So they're all gonna be a little bit different length. Some of them are similar, but of course, like I say, you wanna if you wanna alter this, then um try just taking your measuring tape and kind of seeing like where you would want, I would take your measuring tape, put it over your shoulder and measure out like kind of what you think that you would 
like for your length. Take a look at the schematic at the back of the pattern and see then how long. So if we look at um, our length here, our total length, so like a 5X is 45 inches. If you think, okay, this is going to fit way too short on me, then you want to increase that. So the medium for me is going to be 41. Okay, so that's a little bit past my waist. It's not quite um, complete crop. So it gives me a little bit to tuck in into my jeans, which I, which I really liked. So take your measuring tape, take a look at your body, see what you want to do to alter that. Okay, this is just... This is just a, you know, go buy it if, if it works for you. If it doesn't, change it. So now what you're going to do is chain out either what I've told you or you can just do multiples of three. So one. Keep my hook on here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so I've done 18 and I'm going to do one more. So you're adding one to the end, okay? Because that's going to, because we're working into the second chain from the hook, that multiple of three, our pattern will be multiples of three, but we need to chain that extra one. I hope I did this loose enough because we're working into the back humps when we do this or the back leg of the chain. So instead of working through the chain like this, you turn the chain and you work into that little hump. And what that does is when you go to finish your edging, you're gonna have a nice easy stitch to work into. You're not just gonna be working into that one part of the chain and it makes it so much easier. It keeps this edge so clean. It is, I, I have to admit it is a little fiddly. So you gotta take your time and that's why I'm just doing a small swatch. But when you have that long, you know, 160 plus chain, it's, it's a little bit to get through all of these. But just take your time and, and work along. And I'm just going to remind you guys, make sure you're commenting because I want to pick somebody to win some yarn. You're going to get enough yarn that you can make a 5X size. I love that there's so much yardage on these balls. There's, getting distracted, there's 231 yards on a ball. So for the medium size, I, I love. And I'm actually really excited I'm making myself a second top here because I love it. I've got into wearing more of these high-waisted jeans now and I don't have a lot of shorter tops, to be honest. And so now I'm trying to get some shorter tops into my wardrobe for the higher waisted pants. So I'm just slowly working away. Yep, pop up your comments. As soon as I get through this row, I will take a look at them again. I'm trying to keep my eyes focused on my stitches. I hope you can see this okay. This is the best color I had to pick from out of my selection for you to see. The link is on the blog. I've got the link in the YouTube description. So wherever you are, there's the link to go grab your yarn. I believe, I think it's $5.99 a ball. I can't remember exactly. $5.99 or $6.99 a ball US. We Crochet does ship to a lot of places, UK, Australia, and they offer really great uh, shipping rates and stuff too. I think if you spend so much, you get it free. Okay, that little last one's hard to get into. I wanna make sure that my stitch count is right. So if you, you can always go back and look at your stitches here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So I know I do have to get into that last little guy right there. I feel like I should have glasses on to see this, it's so small. Just a second, I'm gonna pull my hands off the camera just so I can pull it in closer to my face and just get that last little one. Another trick is sometimes if you use your yarn needle, if it's, you can 
pop in your yarn needle to just pop up that stitch. Okay. All right, so I've got it in there. Okay, great. So I'm gonna take a look at your comments again, just to make sure that I'm answering any of your questions. What color are you using for the second top? This is cork. I'm using cork and I think this color is great. I think it's actually gonna look really good with my skin tone. I'm gonna check back on YouTube to see what else. Okay, so someone doesn't like the camera angle, try. Some of the other comments said they just turned their phone. Maybe that will help, I apologize. There is also the full YouTube tutorial that you can check out if you're really struggling. Um, someone, Kathy said she thinks the top longer would be great. I think it would be too. I actually, my daughter said when they saw it, make it as a cover up, mom, do a longer version. That would look great for the beach. Okay, so I think I think we're good. So let's get on to the next row. Okay, so row two, I've put two here, whether you're on the right, right side or the wrong side. So that's what this little bit in brackets means. So now to start row two, you can turn in chain three, or I always like to chain three and turn. I know that can be confusing for some people, but it doesn't really make any difference. I just like to chain three and turn. So, or turn first and then do your chain three. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is this first stitch here we're, that is kind of attached to your chain, we are skipping that and we're skipping the next stitch as well. So skip the next stitch, which is this stitch, and then in the next stitch, we are gonna do a double crochet and a single crochet. So a double and then a single. And then you're gonna chain two. Okay, and then we're skipping. This is really like a setup row because it's row three that we're actually gonna repeat throughout. This is getting us set up for that stitch pattern. And you can look at the chart. I've done the little chart for you in the pattern as well. So if you like that, if you prefer that to follow instead of the written pattern, that's great. So skip two, and then in the next, we're gonna do a double crochet and a single crochet. I'm gonna move all these little guys out of your way so you don't have to see that. And then we skip two stitches again. And I suggest doing up a smaller swatch like this at the beginning just to kind of test out your gauge. Although like I say with a pat and the gauge is important if you want to get exact to what I've done. If you start playing around and changing things up, look more at what rectangle size you want in the end. So but do a little swatch, check your gauge, check to my unblocked and then if you meet my unblocked you definitely will meet the blocked okay. So don't worry about the blocked amount. Try to meet that gauge for the unblocked. So now we'll skip the next two, do a double, and a single in the same stitch, and then chain two, skip the next two, double, and single chain two and I know when you have that long chain it can be scary to see where you're going to end up but I've ended with three which is what you want for some reason you only have two I would say just fudge it and and just skip over into the last but if you're sometimes it's good to double check your stitch count before you get into the pattern so you're not doing all that work and then having to rip it out. But if you are just short one stitch, honestly, I would say just fudge it and work into the last. But that's me being lazy sometimes. Okay, so the last stitch we're doing a double. And a single. Okay, and then that is 
Now, I think I wrote down for you, yep, I did add to the pattern how many clusters you should have. So that's just these little, like, and that's an easy count. So if you count across one, two, three, four, five, I have six. So if you multiply six times three, it's 18 and I have 18 stitches. So this right here at the end of row two will tell you how many clusters you should have if you wanna just double check that you've got the right number of clusters going across, okay? Now we're gonna chain three again and turn or turn chain three, whatever your preference is. And we are gonna skip that first single crochet and then in the double, can see the stitches higher. So there's the single, there's the double. We're gonna work the double crochet and a single crochet, chain two. Okay, and now what we're gonna do is we're always working in the double crochets. So it's a really, there's the double. You're gonna work in the doubles all the way across. So yarn over, go into the double crochet. Work, whoops, work a double and then a single, chain two. So I really love this pattern. I picked this pattern because it was quick for me to crochet. It's, and like I say, even though you're working with fine yarn, I find that it does work really quickly and you can visually really pick out that stitch that you're working into and I love how it looks blocked out I love how open and lacy it looks and it has great drape really good flow nice and airy so you we're just working in now the doubles so it's really repetitive it's chain two work a double and a single chain two. We get to the end here and I did have a question on the YouTube video about working into the chain three. You actually don't. You work into the double. May seem a little bit weird but that's where you end. So you're ending a double and a single in the last double crochet. Okay because we're putting two stitches in there it kind of puffs out. And then you're just repeating now row three throughout. So we'll chain three and turn. And we just repeat the same thing again. So you're skipping that first single and in the double crochet, you're working the double and single. Okay, so I'm gonna take a look at comments again just to see if you've asked. Um, I started with a foundation single crochet and you can you can totally do that um, Janice that's that's another option I don't know I I guess I prefer I guess I think myself I can do this quicker doing the chaining in the back hump but the foundation single crochet is another alternative if you are really fast at that you prefer to do that go ahead and do the foundation single crochet instead and so when you're when you're doing a foundation single crochet you're just looking at your end result here so do 150 of them 156 162 etc you don't have to do that extra one so you can definitely do that instead okay and i'm just going to check again in the comments in ribbler to see if i'm missing anything Okay, so I think I think we're good to move on to the next step. So the easy repeat working with the fine yarn definitely helps if you are working like single crochets or really tight stitch where the lacy stitches really work up quickly with the fine yarn. And I think in the end, you're really gonna love how flowy and light it is, especially for the warmer weather. Think you're gonna really love it. So let's now take a look at what you're gonna do. So if you look at the pattern, if you're new to reading patterns, you know this can sometimes confuse people. So we're looking at these, 
This tells you up here your sizing. So in the brackets, like a small, and if on Ribbler, which is what I love, it's all highlighted in color. So you can tell what size you are based on the highlighted color in my printed pattern here. Of course, it's not in color, so it doesn't give you all of that, but you're just looking here. So if you're making the extra small, you're gonna work 24 rows in total. If you're working a small, you're gonna do 26, medium 28, and so on, okay? You're just repeating row three for the rows you need. If you're altering it, if you want it wider, for whatever reason, if you're not blocking and you need it wider, then, I mean, if you're not blocking, you're just gonna go out to the size that you need, okay? So if you did, let's say 10 inches, multiply 10 by four, because in total it's like four, you've got your front, your back, this front, that back, so it's a multiply by four. So if you have 10 inches, your total, um, the circumference is going to be 40 inches. So not blocked, you can look at that. But if you're blocking it, it's going to stretch out. You're going to have more than what you measure out. I think mine blocked maybe an inch and a half bigger than what the actual width was. I have that in my YouTube tutorial. If you take a look at that, I give you my measurements before I blocked it and after I blocked it to see the difference. So you're just going to do that and then you're going to make two of them. So you're making two rectangles, follow for the size you're working on, and then your very last row, you're going to work a single crochet. Okay, let me work across this and then I'll show you that single crochet that you're going to do. So let me finish this row and then show you how to finish it off. So I'm working a double and a single chain two, working into the double of the previous row. And I'm working fairly slow here, but I can speed this up really, really quick. So you can work across this super fast if you're a fast crocheter. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do is just chain one because my final row will be a row of single crochet. So now what we'll do is in the first stitch, we're gonna work a single crochet. We're gonna work a single crochet in the double. And now in that chain two space, we're only working one single crochet. Because if you remember, these little cluster bits are worth three stitches, okay? So to keep our stitch count at where we need to be, so I need 18 stitches, I do one, two, three one, two, three. Okay, so you just work, you're just working across a single crochet in each stitch and a single crochet in the chain two space. And then what you do when you get to the end, so I've done single double in the chain three now, we add a single, okay? And then your stitch count should be correct. So I know this is a little mini version, but this is how your rectangle is gonna look. And I just wanna show you, I know this is really a small swatch, but I wanna show you the difference, again, between what that stitch looks like not blocked and then the difference of how this pulled and opens up when you block it like this so it's a big difference this would be a lot tighter uh, thicker almost feeling where this is just really loose and relaxed 
So that is really the, the whole, all you have to do to make the rectangles, okay? And then what's gonna happen is you're gonna go block it. I talked a little bit about the blocking process, but I'll go over it again. <clears throat> so once I had both my rectangles completed, I filled up my sink um, with lukewarm water. I added a little bit of dish soap and I just put them in, submerge them completely in the water, let them soak for about 25 to 30 minutes and just did some other things while that was soaking. And then I just gently kind of squeezed all the water out and then I rolled it in a towel just to get any excess and not to like distort my pieces too much. So I just rolled them up, brought them upstairs. I have, I used four of my large foam mats, put them down. I laid out my pieces on the foam mats and I took my measuring tape. So when you lay them out, I like to start at one end. So I laid it down, took my measuring tape, blocked it out. Okay, so you, you measure it out, block it out to your measurement for the size that you're working on. And then next thing I do is I take my length. I go down and try to keep it like really even. So then I measure out my length and I pin then this side and then I measure out to make sure that I have the right width here. So I've got my length done, I have my width pinned, and then I start pinning the sides, keeping them as even as I can and pin it all out. And then I do the same thing to the second one. And I usually do it at night and let it just dry overnight to make sure that it's fully dried. These actually dry up really quick. So if you did them in the morning, you may be able to get away with it blocking sooner. But I usually leave it overnight and then it's nice. I know that it's really nice and dry. <clears throat> and then what you're going to do, I've done one side. I've only done one side of this one. I didn't have time to do the rest. So then what you're going to do is we're going to edge this piece. Because as you can see, it doesn't really look that great from the blocking. It's kind of wobbly on the sides. It doesn't look really good. So what you want to do is take that larger hook because now your work is expanded quite a bit. You don't want to use a smaller hook or it's going to bunch it. You want to come and join in. I like to start just my right side facing so you can see the stitch looks nice. Now you can always add a stitch marker to the right side of your work if you struggle figuring out what's the right side, what's the wrong side. That's a tip that I usually give because sometimes it can be harder to tell, but I can tell just by looking at the stitch, like this would be the wrong side. It doesn't, it doesn't look as nice. This side, you can kind of see a bit of the edging of the stitch better. So what you'll do at this point, I'm gonna cut off. And I'm quickly gonna check your comments again. Okay, sorry, I'm just checking just to make sure Ribbler answered some comments there for me. Thank you, Ribbler, for doing that. Um, so I'm just, thanks for the blocking tips, very helpful. That's great. I know I was really, like I needed advice too when I started blocking. I had no idea really how to block and how to do it. So I've kind of just learned as, I, as I've gone. And I also love my steamer. I don't know if any of you guys have a hand steamer. I'm gonna show you mine. It's a Conair. Um, it's just a little handheld and I use this all the time as well. It's amazing having a hand steamer and I like to do the seams gently, like just steam over them when I'm finished just to prevent any like tugging. Oh, I use my steamer all the time to make my finished garments look great. It's kind of 
like I think ironing for garments. So you, you obviously can't iron your garments, but you can steam them. Just of course, be careful, like not to wreck the fabric. Um, test out a small area to start with. And, but yeah, the steamer is so handy to have. So I highly suggest getting one of them if you don't already have one. So what we're gonna do now, actually I don't need to slip knot, I can just join this right in. You wanna find the first stitch. I'm trying to determine here where, there it is, it's tiny. We're gonna join in with our larger hook, so 4.5 millimeter. Now if you find that even with this size, it's tugging, then just go up an another size. Just one second. Dad, I'm doing a live up here. My dad just walked in and is talking. So I just wanted to let him know. Okay, so we're just working single crochets now and if you've started that chain, like I told you to, it's gonna be so much easier to work into these stitches when you're working around doing your single crochets. So I'm gonna go across a few here. And then what you wanna do once you get a few done, just look back over your work. Like I'm intentionally not pulling these stitches tight. I'm keeping my stitches loose. I'm not making a tight single crochet. So if you automatically make a tight single crochet, you might wanna go up a hook size, okay? So the overall effect is you want, you don't want any pulling, you just want everything to sit nice like that. Work along your edge. I know we all can crochet a little differently. Some of us are tighter, some of us are looser. So just alter that hook size so you get a really nice look along the edge. It's again, just one of those things that it's, you know, not written in stone to use this hook size. Use what looks good. So finishing off this edge is, now I don't know if you guys want me to actually finish this entire edge, so I may just do the one to show you the next step. It will take a bit of time to go around the entire piece. I tried to kind of have stuff prepared for you to make it a little bit simpler because there's no way we could make a whole top together in, a, in one video. I found for myself, I spent about two nights in the evening crocheting my panels. So if you're looking at time frame, I would just spend a few hours in the evening crocheting. And so probably like four nights in total to make my two panels. So look at about a week, I would say, depending on how much time you get in the evenings to spend how fast a crocheter you are. I find I'm sometimes, I can be slow when I'm watching TV. Like if I really focus on it, I think I can go faster, but quite often I just end up sort of leisurely working away at it in the evenings. Yesterday I had to work, I, I did make a whole panel yesterday because I wanted to get it ready for the cowl. So I had to spend a little bit more time while I'm doing this I'm just gonna check oh someone said their daughter's eyes lit up yeah I wondered if my girls are gonna want to take and someone just commented again that um, what hook size so I'm using the 4.5 which is a G plus so I'm just filling you in on that again and what there was another Someone else had the same hand steamer and yeah, they love it too. Yeah, I love, and this one, okay. So this one, somebody got theirs at Costco. I think I, 
I either bought it on Amazon or I bought it from Walmart. And I think both prices are really similar. I know I've linked it to Amazon before in some of my tutorials, but I believe you can get them at Walmart and obviously maybe you can get them at Costco too. And it was in that $40 range. My first steamer that I had was a floor model and it was so big and cumbersome. And then it, it died on me and I was actually so happy to get a hand one because the other one was so big and took up so much space. So the hand steamer is great. You have to refill it a little bit more. The water, obviously you don't have as much water there, but it is, it works great. I usually put my sweaters or cardigans up on a hanger and I just steam uh, the edges. And if anything's curling, like if you've got a ribbing or something that's curling or a seam that's pulling, the steamer will just take care of all of that and kind of give it that like pressed look. I use the steamer even for my clothing. If it will steam rather than having to iron, I avoid ironing at all costs. So yeah, for the price, I think it's totally worth, worth getting one. After this video, I'll put a link for you guys if you're interested. I'll get a link for one for you and, and pop it in the description. So it is time consuming as you can see. It's and like I say, if it the if it pulls a little bit, even when we seam, that steamer will will look after. But you want to make sure that the hook you're using isn't pulling the work too much. But I do have to get myself through this one edge because I have at least one clean edge for you um, to show the seaming, the joining. but it's really easy. I kind of experimented with different ways of joining, but in the end, I ended up just whip stitching, whip stitching the seams together. And this is even where you can play around with your neck opening. I've given you, I think a 12 inch neck opening for all the sizes, but what I did, this is my little handy tip, I put my stitch markers where I was thinking I wanted the neck opening and then I just tried it on. Even though the whole piece wasn't seamed, I just tried on that neck opening to see um, how I liked, like how it was sitting and how it fit. And I actually ended up originally going, like trying 10 inches and I was like, no, I think I wanted a little bit more open. And so I ended up going with 12 inches. So you can for sure, alter that up depending on what you're comfortable with. Yeah, so if you still have um, more questions, um, just pop them in the comments. I'll try and keep taking a look as we go. So we want to make sure we block it before we edge it. Yes, that is correct, Diane. You wanna block it first before you edge it because as you can see, my stitch is nice and open now. And that's why I have to go up to the larger, much bigger than it was originally. So you wanna use the larger times. Like as you could see with my edges, like it made them kind of like, I'm glad I didn't edge it before I was experimenting with this pattern because I was like, after I saw how my edges looked and they didn't look very good. And I was like, oh, this, you definitely have to go over it after. And then you just get this nice finish when you do that. Which is what you, what you need. So, just still working, it's a long, it's a long stretch. You know, we're going across the front and the back. So it's a lot of stitches. I've got 162 on the size that I'm working on. Yeah, so I'm gonna do my draw soon because I definitely wanna pick somebody. So if you're here watching and you haven't yet commented, comment, just all you have to do is say hi um, or comment with what color you wanna make a top in 
and I'm going to go and scroll through and just randomly pick somebody to win some of this stroll yarn from We Crochet. It's my first time working with stroll and I love it. I think in the past, like I've never really gone light enough for my spring summer um, garments and I'm really warming up to these lighter weight yarns. <laughs> I'm embracing them for my lighter garments. Actually, the sweater I'm wearing right now, this stitch that I've done actually reminds me kind of of it. This is store-bought and I love it. I want to Im imitate it. I have a few different sweaters that I want to imitate that I love. I want to try and do a crochet version. So I'm getting close. I'm almost to the end. And I'm going to go over with you how you do the edging along the bottoms is a little trickier because you don't have you don't have the exact stitches to work into. So I had to do a little math for you to figure that out. So I'm gonna go over that with you just so if you're altering your size at all and you're confused with how many stitches you should put across that bottom, I am gonna go over that with you. Okay, so right now, um, my husband and my father are talking downstairs. I almost want to yell at them and tell them like, go away, I'm doing a live. We can laugh at that, right? Okay. Some people are commenting. Yes, this would be an easy top to pack up and for sure, it's so fun. Okay, so let's take a look at the, I'm just gonna grab my pattern again. <clears throat> to see when we get to the finishing. Okay, so we're putting three single crochets in the corner, so I can do that. So I've done one already. So let's do three, because three just makes a nice corner. Gets you around that a nice 90 degree. So what I, how I figured this out for how many stitches to put across the bottom is I took my, Okay, the number of rows that I have with my stitch pattern. So for my size, I had 27 of the stitch pattern rows. So we've got our three in the corner. So that kind of counts as the first stitch and the first stitch would sort of be our single crochet rows, right? Because we had a single crochet row, single crochet row. Then in between, I have 27 of my stitch stitch pattern rows. So in my stitch pattern rows, I'm going to put two single crochet in each one. Okay, so I end up going across here 54 stitches. And then if you count like part of the corner stitch, it's really like 54, 55, 56. But across here, I'm just doing two. So if you have altered your amount of rows, you want to be like, okay, here is my stitch pattern row. I want to work two single crochet here. Here is my next one. I want to work two single crochet. So when I go across here, I've got this big kind of chain three. So I'm going to do two in that. And then here's my next row here. I'm going to do, make sure I get two stitches in it. And then Here's my next row, my stitch pattern. I hope you understand what I mean by that. And I'm gonna put two in here. And that's what you're doing just all the way across. So you're just making sure you're getting two stitches for each of these rows. And then double check that your stitch count's right. And then that should, it should, work across there pretty even as well that it's not pulling it should work out so and that's what we're doing all the way across the bottom 
Okay. <laughs> I'm just checking your comments again. So how much more yarn do you think you might need for cover up length? I would double your yarn, honestly, because I think for myself, I would double, like for the medium size, I would double my starting chain. So I would just double that and I would double the amount of yarn. And that makes it pretty simple, right? To figure out. So that's what I would do. So whatever size you are, just double, just double it. If you, unless you want it shorter, then yeah, go with, go with that. So you guys are trying to pick your colors, having a hard time. I know it is a hard time um, picking colors. That's why sometimes you just got to order a few <laughs> and see what you end up liking. But I really love this cork color and I loved the pumpkin color. So, but also blue, even white. I'm a big white fan for summer. If you're not sure, go with a white. But, you know, depending on what kind of color person you are, the Rainforest Heather was really pretty. I was maybe going to do the Rainforest Heather, but I just thought it would be a little harder for you guys to see that color on camera. So I went with cork instead. So I hope it's been okay to see. I'm not paying exactly the attention of how many stitches I should have. I'm just trying to eyeball out these rows by doing trying to get those two stitches for every row. And then I'll finish completely edging all of mine later off camera because I don't want to keep you all day, which is what will happen if I have to crochet all around these. <clears throat> but I hope I've inspired you guys to create your own tops because really it's so fun making your own clothes. And some of these simple patterns like this, like I love this style I love a nice flowy top, not too tight. You can just wear a tank top or um, kind of one of those bandeau tops. I had sort of one like that that I modeled under it that I would feel uncomfortable. I mean, you know, like the young girls, they, they're they more comfortable, but I'm in my 40s now. I'm not super comfortable wearing something super showy. So I love something like this to just go over a top. Of a tank and look I am getting to almost the hour I figured I could pull this off in an hour but it looks like I'm gonna go a little over time okay so I am just gonna stop here with one single crochet in the end so I've finished off that edging you can see it's not pulling it looks good I'm just gonna cut this. Of course, I would keep going around the entire piece if I was completing it all, but I just wanna jump ahead and show you guys now the seaming part of this. Okay, so marking the neck opening is gonna be your first step. Okay, so lay out your pieces. My desk, it's gonna be kinda of hard to do this you probably want to lay it out on the floor, to be honest. Maybe what I'm going to do is, I know that these are 41 inches, so even though I can't go with the 41, I'm going to mark the center of them because that's what you want to do first. If you can like lay it right out and measure the whole thing to get the center. So I'm going to try and get these as straight as possible. Okay, so 20 and a half is going to be my halfway point. So I'm going to mark these at 20 and a half. Okay, so I'm just going to measure it and I'm just estimate like just an easy estimate is fine. Don't worry too much. So I'm going to mark it the halfway mark on that side, and then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Go 
grab my other stitch marker. I'm going to put it in here. Okay, so I have the centers marked. Now I'm going to take a look at my pattern here. And you could have it completely even. You could do six inches to the back, six inches to the front. I kind of went a little bit different. I did eight, eight inches in the front and I did four inches in the back because I wanted a nice V going to the back of the top, but also, you know, making sure it was nice and low kind of in the front. So then what you want to do is just measure from here um, your eight inches and then you can just mark. It's really just a rough, guys. You don't have to be doesn't have to be perfect okay just a rough estimate and then you would do the same at the back you would just measure your four inches and then what you do is like right now I have my right sides facing up you're gonna put them together whenever you seam I shouldn't say whenever but most of the time when you seam you're gonna put your right sides facing okay and then you're gonna seam on this side and I'm just gonna demonstrate that for you, how that's gonna look, okay? Doing a whip stitch. And you're gonna use yarn needle. Take your yarn needle, put it on. I like to generally cut off like a long piece to work from. Now you're gonna have corners here. So what I like to do is take the center stitch of the corner. So when you've worked your three, I haven't completely finished these ones, but when you've worked your three around, you wanna find that corner stitch. That's where you're gonna start. Those ends should all be weaved and all that stuff done too, so you're not. But for the purpose of this little video, we're just gonna leave them, on, leave them as they are, okay. So I'm just gonna go in twice here to kind of secure that before I get started. Then let's take a look at these stitches. What you're gonna do is you're not gonna go through both of them. You are just gonna go through, let me make sure I'm doing this correctly from what I did before. Um, so we're folding it together, whip stitch starting at the bottom, work up to the marker and repeat on each side making sure I'm not missing anything I've wrote down in this pattern for you. Okay. So. I go through. You know what? I think I just did that wrong. Look at me. I'm already messing up my own seaming. Just give me a second. You can always pull back. You can always pull back and redo if you don't like the look, but I'm just trying to remember what I did on this video. It's not like it's been that long. Okay, I'm just re-threading my yarn here. I know I had a little trick that I did to make it really cool, okay. So you wanna press these right together. What we're gonna do is we're taking the outer loop, sort of the outer loops and the inner loops are going inside. So when you press them together like this, you're getting that loop. So when you look at your stitch, this outside and then the outside on that one as well. And I'm gonna show you what that's gonna do. It is gonna give you a really cool look. So you're gonna seam all the way up to your marker like that. And now let me show you how taking those outer loops is gonna make it look. You're gonna have this little cool detail. That's how it's gonna look when it's seamed on your right side. Because if you think about it, when we push these together, 
we're not going through those loops. So those loops pushed together, we're going through the other one. So then we have this like cool finish. And I really liked the way that looked. If you go through both loops, you're gonna get a different look again. So that's how that looks if you seam it up. So what you'll do now is seam it up to the marker. You'll flip around, you'll do the same thing on the back. And then the next step, the last step is to seam your sides. So what you'll do is you're gonna measure out your arm opening. So let's take a look at the schematic here. So for the size I worked on, I did a nine inch, so E armhole opening. So this is gonna tell you your armhole opening. As you can see, any of the pictures, like it's nice and big and loose on my arm size, my size did nine. I only did about a half inch difference for each of the sizes. So you'll again seam from the bottom up and you'll have marked out those arm openings. Okay, and it'll be easier once your fronts are together because then you can just put your fold your piece in half or mark it again and just mark out your nine inches and then just seam up to the arm opening on both sides. And that's it. So your top is then done. So you have your neck opening here as I show you. You have your, so your neck opening, your arm openings, seamed here, seamed here, seamed in those areas. And that is, that's it. <clears throat> so let's just take a look again at how my finished, I put a garment tag. <clears throat> These are made, I'm losing my voice guys. I get these custom done from Brick Bubble, brickbubble.ca. She does custom, she'll design design for you. She makes these labels. So I, I purchased them from her, small business owner. And I put that on there so I know the front. <laughs> it's nice having a little detail there, there to tell you which way, but honestly, either way, whether the front and the back, it's not like a huge difference. Although mine ended up looking like my neck ended up being even but it actually wasn't so this is how like my arm opening is looking seeming the same on the sides and you can always go over this now lightly with a steamer so it just hangs nice but other than that guys that's it so I'm gonna scroll through your comments now and I'm gonna pick a winner and I'm gonna get you to email me who I pick and I'll check and see if there's any other comments that I need to answer as I'm scrolling through. I'm going to check both YouTube and Rebler just to make sure. Inspired some of you to create something. I hope there's some of you in here that have never made a garment and are going to try this out. And please share your pictures with me, um, post them, tag me if you're on Instagram or email them to me, whatever way you can get me those pictures I would love. Or join my Facebook group, um, my MJ's Off the Hook Designs community on Facebook. Join and post your pictures in there. I love seeing your stuff. So I am going to go now and I'm going to pick somebody to win some yarn. Okay, hey, thank you so much everyone for being here. So many of you came and chatted with me and asked questions. I really appreciate you joining in on this, Cal. This was a new experience, Ribbler's new, and this feature is brand new that they've done. So I was unsure how it was gonna work, but I hope you enjoyed it and had some fun crocheting along with me today. I'm glad that I was able to get another top made for this. So fun gonna have some more things to wear this spring. Okay, so I'm scrolling here and I'm just gonna stop. I don't have anybody to tell me normally if I'm doing a live with someone they tell <laughs> they say to stop. Okay, so I am stopping here on Lisa L. So Lisa, 
you have won five balls of Stroll yarn. So make sure you pick your color. I want you to email me, okay? I'm gonna nice easy email mjsoffthehook at gmail.com. Okay, so email me and I will will get you some of this yarn from We Crochet to start making your top. So mjsoffthehook at gmail.com. Lisa L, you are the winner. So thank you so much. So I'm going to put that in the comments. Lisa L, you are the winner. Email me at mjs gmail.com. I think I put the wrong. Okay, so I just put that in the comments. I hope you're still here, Lisa, to see that. Anyways, thanks so much, everyone, for joining me. I hope you enjoyed crocheting along with me today and that you're going to make some of your own beautiful tops and post them for everyone to see. So have an awesome Sunday. The, Sunday, the sun is coming out where I am right now, so I'm going to go enjoy my day, take a break, sit on the deck. So thanks so much again, everyone, and have an awesome day. I'm going to figure out how to stop this stream now from my phone. My 